In section six, we're going to talk about acids and bases and how we use them in organic chemistry. This may be review from general chemistry, where you worked a lot with acids and bases, but you're going to see that organic chemists have sort of a larger picture view of acids and bases because we work with acids and bases in solvents other than water. And so there are going to be many things that we treat as acids in organic chemistry that we would never think of as acids when we're doing general chemistry. We're going to start by talking about a little bit of the background of how acids were defined and the various theories of what acids and bases were. The first one we're going to talk about is the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases. This was the earliest attempt to explain acids, bases, and what's they, what they were. They had already, chemists had already identified acids and bases by their reactive properties and certain other physical properties that they had. But they really had no idea why a particular substance would have those properties. So Arrhenius defined an acid as a compound that forms hydronium ions, H3O plus aqueous ions, when dissolved in water. Actually, parenthetically, he initially defined it as a compound that forms hydrogen plus ions or decreases the pH. Um, but in our modern organic chemistry, we tend to work with hydronium ions instead of just plain hydrogen plus ions. He defined a base as a substance that formed hydroxide aqueous ions when dissolved in water. These were very practical definitions. They corresponded with what um, scientists observed when they did chemistry with these substances. However, there was no predictive value to this definition. In order to know if a substance were an acid or a base or neither, you had to conduct an experiment in the lab. You had to dissolve it in water and look and see if the concentration of hydronium increased or the concentration of hydroxide increased or if there were no change in the pH. Right around 1920, a new theory of acid bases emerged. It was defined by the scientists Bronsted and Lowry and so it has been called the Bronsted-Lowry acid base theory. Bronsted and Lowry defined acids and bases in terms of how they are functioning in chemical reactions using this generalized equation. This is called the Bronsted-Lowry acid base equilibrium equation. In it, they defined that acids reacted with bases. An acid in this equation is represented as A with a hydrogen attached, and a base is represented as a substance that has a lone pair of electrons. In the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base theory, what they believed was that the base would use this pair of electrons to make a bond to this hydrogen on the acid and that the hydrogen would release this other pair of electrons to go onto the acid. This would create these products where now the hydrogen atom was attached to the base using the what used to be a lone pair of electrons and the acid would now have a lone pair. So an acid was defined as a species which transferred a hydrogen plus which we often call a proton because a hydrogen plus has just one proton in its nucleus and no electrons. So we would transfer that hydrogen plus to the base. Or you could also say that a base grabs a hydrogen plus from an acid. So it takes it away, which is sometimes a more useful way to think about it. One key feature of this is that this equation is an equilibrium the acid-base reaction is reversible. In the reverse reaction then, we see that the remaining species after the acid has given away its hydrogen functions as the base in the reverse reaction, 
it has the lone pair, it makes the bond to the hydrogen. And the species that was formed when the base took the hydrogen becomes the acid. So there is this sort of reciprocal relationship. An acid on one side becomes a base on the other side. A base on one side becomes an acid on the other side. If we look in terms of the reverse reaction. And so what they did was they gave these species names. They said on the left hand side of the equation we would have an acid. When the acid reacts it becomes a related or conjugate base. On the left hand side we would have a base. When it reacts it would become a related or conjugate acid. The important thing to note here is that although we use the terms conjugate base and conjugate acid for the species on the right hand side of the equation, there's nothing special about them. They are just an acid and a base. So, to summarize then in words, in the Bronsted-Lowry theory, an acid is any species that donates or gives away a proton, a hydrogen plus. In order to do this, it's going to have to have a hydrogen in its structure. So, in the Bronsted-Lowry acid base theory, if you don't have a hydrogen in your formula, you obviously can't have a hydrogen in your structure, you will not be able to be an acid. The base is any species that accepts or makes a bond to a proton. It must have either a lone pair or a pi bond in its structure because it can use either lone pair electrons or pi bond to make the new bond. It's going to need some kind of electrons to make the new bond. The conjugate acid would just then be the species that formed when the base makes a bond to a proton and the conjugate base would be the species that's formed when an acid loses a proton. There's always this relationship. The third acid base theory was actually made by Lewis. And it basically represented, in a sense, sort of marketing for his Lewis structure theory. What he did was he looked at certain Arrhenius acids that when dissolved in water created hydrogen plus, but that were not Bronsted-Lowry acids because they had no hydrogen atoms in their structure. And what he theorized was that in an acid-base reaction, what we actually had was a situation where a base was using a pair of electrons to make a bond into an empty space on a Lewis structure. Now, using our curved arrow formalism, which we're going to talk about more in a little bit, we would show this pair of electrons on this molecule, which is water, reaching out and making a bond to that boron. So that in our product, this pair of electrons would now have been converted to a bond between the oxygen and the boron atoms. We also have to cover uh, formal charges, and then it's reasonable to theorize that then this, one of these hydrogens, would be available to be donated and create a hydronium. We're not going to use the Lewis acid base theory much as such, although we are going to use the type of electron movements that we show in the Lewis acid base theory to describe a wide variety of reactions. In organic chemistry, we are mostly going to use the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base theory. One of the things that we're going to want to be able to do is show how the actual Bronsted-Lowry acid and base specifically react. Which pair of electrons is making a bond to which hydrogen in the molecules. So what we see in the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base uh, reaction is that electrons sort of flow between atoms and molecules. In order to show that electron flow, we're going to use curved arrows, very similar to the way that we use curved arrows to show how theoretically electrons might be moving among resonance structures. 
Now, in a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction, there is a specific pattern of electron flow that we always observe. We always see a pair of electrons, which would normally be either a lone pair or a pi bond, in other words, one of the multiple bonds, reaching out to make a bond to a hydrogen. The bond that the hydrogen has already will then be broken because a hydrogen is only allowed to have a maximum of one bond. It can only make a bond with two electrons. So when we reach out and make a bond to the hydrogen on one side, we let go of the bond on the other side. That bond then just flows as a pair of electrons onto the atom that was formerly bonded to the hydrogen. So it looks like this. Grab here, let go there. The molecule that's doing the grabbing is going to be our base. The molecule that's letting go is going to be our acid. Then we would just draw the result. So this species would now have one fewer hydrogen, so we have no hydrogen here. This pair of electrons would become a second lone pair. On this side, this species would no longer have a lone pair. Instead, that lone pair would now be a bond between two atoms. The hydrogen would move onto the top of that bond and then we would have to fix our formal charges and everything. One very important thing to notice is that the arrows always start on electrons. They start on electrons and they point to atoms or they point to bonds. We never draw an arrow starting on an atom and pointing toward electrons. Okay? We specifically for Bronsted-Lowry acid base, a, a, a problem or a mistake, specifically for Bronsted-Lowry acid base, we don't want to make the mistake of starting our arrow on a hydrogen and showing the hydrogen jumping through space. We want to show the hydrogen being grabbed. If you draw your arrow in the wrong direction, it will be incorrect and it will be marked wrong.